Hey guys, welcome back to Bait and Tackle. And today I've got a little bit different of a video. I'm actually gonna go through, I had, I had one guy reach out to me and I've had some other people reach out to me in the past before, but we're gonna talk about ventilation with my lead pouring station that I built. The one thing that I want you guys to understand is lead is very dangerous. The fumes from, from melting it with getting it hot are very dangerous. Um, even the lead itself, if you're exposed to it too much in the skin, it can cause cancer and it can do a lot of different things to your body that, that you really don't want to do. So you need to practice safety when you're doing anything with lead. So the one thing, I don't really wear gloves a lot and I need to, I should really start wearing gloves a lot, but um, my lead exposure is a lot less because I put a ventilation system in above my lead pots. So today we're gonna to talk about that. And I'm gonna kind of just go over like the pieces, the fan, the, 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 the parts that you would need to actually set something up like this yourself. So let's get into this. All right guys, so the first thing we're gonna talk about here and bear with me, cause I'm just holding the camera and it's gonna be probably a little bit jumbled up. But what I did was I built this frame and let me show you exactly what I did here. I built this little frame and I've added some stuff to it over the over time. Like I've got all my hooks down here. Here's some some lead and I've got another lead pot down there on the floor. And that's kind of like what I use for melting lead. That's I don't know if it's bad or whatever, just to make like ingots and stuff like that to put them in this box. So one thing I wanted to show you was I made this two by four frame and it's framed back, it's just a small frame, four legs. I got them tied together on the sides and I got them tied together in the back with a two by four back there, if you see. Let me try to pull this out. Well, I guess that's a little heavier than I thought. But just a nice little frame down there. And it's four legs, four two by four legs. Simple two by fours, you don't need anything crazy. Well, again, so super simple stuff you can buy from the hardware store, cheap too. Two by fours are very cheap, especially if you get the framing ones. So what I did here was I made just, I put a, a two by four across here for support. And then I, I didn't do one in the back cause I, I used this plywood here. And I want to say that's, uh, not sure if that's three eighths, half inch. I don't know what I used. Let's see. Looks like half inch or a little bit less. So I use a little bit of plywood and I believe this is like, I don't know, two by three maybe, or two by four. I can't even remember. I can't even remember the last time I built this and how long it is, how wide it is, anything. So it looks like it's about, yeah, it's 24 inches wide and it's probably like 16 deep, I would guess. Nope, 12. So it's just a 24 by 12. So. So it shows you how much I know about measurements. So what I did was I decided to make a concept of a sealed box. And I, I say sealed, but it's not all the way sealed because obviously I need to be able to stick my hands underneath and use the actual lead pots. So what I did was same thickness of two by four there, or uh, same thickness of plywood here, same thickness of plywood here. I also put a different piece of something else in the back. Then I put a piece on the top here, if you notice, and if you look up in here, what I've got is, it's a little plastic vent. And let me see, I, don't, I think the light's gonna be too much. Let me see if I can show you this way. So that is like a cone-shaped hood, and I got it off of Amazon. And I'm gonna link the stuff that I think you would be interested in, in the bottom of the, or in the description of the video. So if you wanna go buy this stuff, like I said, I got it all from Amazon. It shouldn't be that big a deal um, to get it. It's, and it was fairly inexpensive. It wasn't super expensive. Then, and you can see the, the hood here. Sorry about all these lures and parts and all the stuff I've got kind of laying around. Um, but you can see, let me get this stuff out of the way here so you guys can see. But you can see the hood here. So there is the scoop, okay? Then we go up and I taped, I just taped around this to make the connection because the I didn't have a joint that was that fit for it. So what I ended up using was just some some thick, um, some real thick uh, duct tape, black duct tape. I also put one around the middle, just a little piece here around the seal. And this is a plastic fan. 
So the actual fan itself, the blades are plastic, which if you can find a metal one, it would be better. And this is a four inch inline fan and it's taking, taking the, the air and sucking it up. And I got this flexible four, four inch tube and it goes out to this, I got this little, this little, uh, what do you want to call it? Like reducer or, you know, it's, it's a combiner. Cause I have another fan system here that goes to my plastic sealed box. So what we're going to talk about is how each one of these does something different. So this is for the lead, this four inches for the lead. This one's for my plastic station and airbrushing and whatnot. And then I have some aluminum tape just to seal the joints where, where they make up. I also have the pipe clamps, four inch pipe clamps on there to make it so that it's nice and tight but I also taped around stuff. Now in between here, right here, if you notice, there's two clamps right there. This guy here in the middle is actually a, um, I'm not sure what they call it, basically like a, a check valve almost. So the air goes up the tube, through it, and it's got a plate inside that pushes it that way. So it pushes it open and it goes out. And I also have that tapped outside. I don't know if you can see it or not. That is a basement window that used to be glass. I took the glass out, put a piece of plexiglass in it, cut the hole and put the vent right outside. So it goes directly outside the house, out into the open air. So it does not come in the house. I'm not breathing in any chemicals. I'm not breathing in any, any lead uh, chemicals at all. I had to tie this up just to get it off. It was making some some crazy noise. And also, I'm going to start it up for you in a few seconds here just to show you what it's what it's like. But it keeps me safe. I've got it all. And what I did was I put a divert or one of those check valves, and I can't remember what exactly what they're called, but I put one here, and then I also put one here. So they can't backtrack into each other. So the lead goes through here, goes out, and it can't go back into the plastic one. So it can't come back in and go into my other box. I made it purposely so that it wouldn't do that. So the air goes into that tube and it's at an angle where it goes out and it goes right outside. And there's a, I bought, that's a bigger, this is a bigger tube, this is a six inch tube. Um, but for what you need, if, if you're just doing lead is a four inch, that's, that's plenty of air movement. This is also a uh, 2,500 RPM, I believe the, I want to say the CFM on that fan is like a hundred and something. Let me see if I've got it right here. I just want to double check. It's 195 CFM. Plenty, plenty of airflow to get it out of the house. Now, the other thing I want to mention is I took a piece of clear plexiglass. This whole thing is a piece of plexiglass. And I covered the box down to here so that I had plenty of room to get up in here. And by the way, I sealed every corner, see that with that black tape. I think I also put some caulk behind it too, but everywhere there's a joint, I put black tape, except for where that box screws in. I taped up top, I think. Yeah, I taped up top on that. So it's all taped in, it's all sealed up so that all the, that air just goes up and out. So again, something, something interesting. Um, had some people ask me some questions about it. Hopefully I covered everything I needed to, but that's how I pour lead safely. And again, it's not that expensive. I'll put some prices and I'll put um, the links below. Then that way you guys have them in the description. So go check out the description when you get a chance. And like I said, it, it came out great. It keeps me safe and I can pour lead inside. I'm, now I'm still in the basement. I'm not actually in the house house part. So I'm in the basement still. So even if it does a little bit, it's not getting anywhere where my kids are, or my wife is or anything like that. So it's, I'm still trying to keep it away and it does what it needs to do and it keeps me safe. So that's about it for, for this video, guys. I just wanted to, like I said, give you an overview on my ventilation system for lead. A lot of people have been asking me about it, specifically one individual. Hopefully they got what they needed out of this. Again, it just can fit, consists of a few parts. You got the, the, the vent, the wood box you can create on your own. I did line it with a piece of tin on the bottom just to, 
just to catch the, the lead if it comes out or spills out or drips out or you know how some of these drip a lot and then they'll you know kind of spill over. But I just put that down so it wouldn't burn the wood. Uh, nice little, just, just cheap little piece of tin from, from Lowe's or Home Depot. But you know, putting together the box, I don't even know what it's gonna cost you for wood, maybe like 40, 50 bucks. I'm not sure, don't quote me on that. And then, you know, I put a light inside here just so that you guys can see, I'll turn it on real quick. But I put a light inside here and that's what turns my fan on too. So the fan and the light are controlled off of just this one little switch. And you can hear right now it's going up and out. So again, 195, I think CFM, four inch plastic fan. If you can find a metal one, that might be better, but I will put this one in the description. A four inch flexible pipe with a, I just got a diverter. You don't need the diverter in there, or the, the check valve. You don't need that if you're only running one tube outside the house, you just need one just to let it go outside. And I'll put a little um, thing in there, probably for the, the little cap you would need to put it outside. So it, it, it will require some work. You gotta drill holes and you know, in my case, I had to replace a gla glass with plexiglass. It's, it, was a, it was a little bit of a process. But to be safe and so that I could do it in a controlled environment where I'm inside, I'm not outside freezing my butt off in a garage. I'm not, you know, not outside with, with fans going. It's not freezing cold. It's not super hot with the humidity. I, I don't want to deal with all that. I started doing some of that in the garage and I decided, you know what, I need to do this in the basement. So this is my solution that I came up with. So hopefully that got that helps you out guys. Again, I appreciate y'all for watching. Please like, comment, share and subscribe. And let me know if you guys like this type of video or not. I've got a lot of other things we could probably take a look at like the vent box for the plastics. We could we could go into that. We could do a deep dive into that. Um, how I set up that station and have my microwave and everything like that. And, and that, that's actually a giant seal box too with a big swing door on the front. So let me know if you like that kind of video. I can make some other stuff. I would like to start getting into some other videos like that, like this, where you know we build some things. I've always wanted to build one of those air vices. And I'm, I think I have everything I need, but it's gonna be taking the time to put it together and everything. So could be something that maybe we could do in the future. You guys let me know. So, but thank you so much for watching and remember, keep on baiting.